Hello everyone, welcome to another Mosaic ASMR video. In this video, I am showing myself building a mosaic at three times speed. So that means that parts that I've shown all took three times longer to actually accomplish than is shown, as well as there are certain portions of the building process where I did not get good footage of. I tried a couple of different things with this mosaic, which I will talk about more when we get to it. So I'll start with just kind of describing the process a little bit. In these mosaics, usually my plan is to do it in layers, as well as color blocks. So in this image, the top layer is the mushroom cap. Then we break it into the subcategory of color blocks. So the first color block you would generally choose for the most detailed portion, the small bits. So I started with the white dots that are on the mushroom cap. Once I had those placed, I applied a liberal amount of just standard white Elmer's glue to the fiberglass mesh and started to fill in the background color of red to complete the mushroom cap. You can see here that I've kind of laid out what I would call my palette already. One thing to note about the process of filling in around a more detailed item, such as the white dots, is that you want to have that background color to hug the shape of the more detailed item as tightly as possible. The grout that I put into these even though it's a different color, you can actually create a distortion in your the way that you see it. So with the gray grout that I use, it's a very neutral color. Um, in my experience, it shows off what I'm trying to avoid less with a nice neutral gray color. However, you'll still Well, for example, in this image, you have the white circles. If the red doesn't hug those circles closely, any grout on the outside of those circles will actually make it look less like a circle. So, in this video, I'm not actually, I shouldn't say this video, this portion of the mosaic building process. I am not cutting these shapes intentionally. I'm trying to create small random shapes that can be fit together um, based on the size. And generally, the smaller you do it, the 
tighter fit you can actually get around, say, the white dot, the random break method makes it easier to create the image without having to have a precision cut saw. So I'm adhering the pieces one by one based on their size and then as I need to fill in particular uh, areas with a with a color I will start to shape the pieces a little more intentionally so that they fill the space correctly The mesh that I'm building on is just a standard fiberglass mesh generally used for drywall applications. As I said, I'm just putting a temporary adhesion using just Elmer's glue to this mesh. I have a piece of plastic underneath the mesh to prevent the mosaic from adhering to the surface that it's being built on. We don't want the mosaic Elmer's glued to a table or the cutting table that I have here. The image was one that I just drew with a sharpie directly onto the mesh. Quite often I'll have like a printout of the image that I want to use underneath the plastic. However, with a simple image such as this, I was able to draw it. My drawing skills are pretty lacking they I, I have real issues with perspective and shading and several other problems I'm, I'm much better at taking an image and turning it into a mosaic rather than trying to create the image to start with. However, with something simple like this, it's something that I can do. So next layer that I chose to work from is the underside of the cap. You can see that these pieces that I'm using are long elongated points to try to give the impression of the oh what's the underside of a mushroom called the pleats that's not what it's called but it's like a pleated underside so you can see I'm of experimenting with what direction I actually want them to face. I filled in a bit of the stem to attempt a that to create that tightness that I say said. So I decided to do the stem first. 
so that when I build the underside of the mushroom cap, it will fit, as I mentioned, nice and tight to the stem. You can see I attempted to add shading to the mushroom. Um, it could have been done better. Um, but then again, every time I do any kind of these projects, I always look back at it and think, okay, I could have done this better, I could have done this better. Essentially, every piece of art I've ever made, I can point to numerous things and say, I'm unhappy with this, I'm unhappy with the way this turned out. But unlike with painting, it's much more difficult to replace a part that you're unhappy with. So my philosophy when it comes to these kinds of things in the mosaic is I will look at what I've done, decide how I could have done it better, and then try to apply those lessons that I've learned to the next mosaic that I build. Kind of making it a never-ending learning process. But back to the shading. So on the shading, you can see on the red, are you in the upper left-hand corner, I used a lighter shade of red, and then worked my way to a darker shade of red on the right. And then on the stem, you can see I did one side white and one side gray. Um, the stem, I, I feel that the shading on the cap was done fairly well. The stem was a little ham-fisted with just one color and another, rather than trying to um, use shading to also create the idea of a light source within the image, but also the roundness of the stem. There's actually some techniques that I've learned in the past, but because it's been so long since I've done mosaics this way, I didn't employ them. I it's one of those things where I thought it was better at the time, but having looked at it, it reminds me of what those techniques can be. So, in the future, if I have like a tree trunk or a stem that I have decided to build, hopefully the roundness of that stem can be represented better through my work. So, I'll go ahead, I went ahead and finished up the underside of the mushroom cap. And next, let's see, decided to adjust the pieces there. I was unhappy with the way that they looked. Oh, I just brought the, I see, I brought the stem all the way up into the mushroom cap to try and fix the perspective. I'm not sure it actually helped. Um, so next, 
I started to just do the simple green background. And in this, I didn't do any shading. It appears as if I started by trying to do a shadow but I think eventually I abandoned that because it wasn't looking correctly and ultimately decided to just do a green mishmash of different colors to just kind of create a sort of fuzzy background, an out-of-focus background. Um, that seems to be a popular way of photographing, 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 photographing this type of natural items like micro photography is to have the subject of the photo in clear sharp focus and then the background as a out of focus kind of fuzziness um, So let's see, I'm making some adjustments. At some point, I've got to add my straight edge to create a better line. Let's see. So, rather than just spreading glue across the entire thing, I'm actually applying e glue to each piece and putting it down. You can see that I'm continuing the random break method. I think it was at this point I started to second guess having a shadow of the mushroom on the ground and I end up just spreading that out there we go so as you can see I ended up just spreading it out just putting random colors I'm not sure that was the right move um, now that I'm looking at it being built again, I'm watching the video with you and commenting on it, just so you know. As you can see, I went ahead and added my, my uh, square there to create as straight and square of edges as possible. I just build up to the square. And it just kind of creates a little border for me there. One thing that I have to be careful of is not to actually have the pieces end up being glued to the square. In the past, I've actually had the pieces ended up being glued to the square. And then as I removed it to move it to another position, it pulled the pieces away and ruined my image. So that's just another thing that I have to keep in mind of. And one of the things that um, I've learned, and the trick is to 
hold the pieces down as I pull it away and also not to let the glue start to dry before I remove the square. So as you can see, I just did random color mixture with a random break on the green background. Just a simple ground simulation of ground or not simulation, a, a mosaicing of a out of focus green ground behind it. Maybe a mossy log or whatever you might like it to be. So as you can see, I moved the square using the previous portion I built to help try to keep the squareness of the image. When I move it, and then you can see that because the square is now running up that left hand side, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and finish the green portion of the mosaic on the left hand side. We're getting to the point of this mosaic where I'm starting to use pieces that are shaped a little more intentionally to finish the fill. So next, what I'll do is the sky. So reposition the square use my previously drawn lines and the edge that's already been built to try and keep it as square as possible. I apply glue in the background area and you can see that I've I started to pull the blue pieces. Now there is a trick that I've learned when it comes to skies it's something that I probably should have noticed in real life, but it had to be taught to me. One thing about skies is they generally closer to the horizon are going to appear a, a lighter blue. And then as you move up from the horizon, it becomes a darker blue. Little camera adjustment there. I'm not sure that all of these pieces stay where they are. I might have had to make some adjustments move some of the darker blues up, move some of the lighter blues down. So these glass pieces that I order, um, they come in a big bag just m of mixed colors. And these colors, as you can see, have actually have wide ranges of uh, shades to them, shades and hues and opacity. Um, it can it can vary quite a bit, which is actually better than purchasing glass that's all one standard color, because then I can actually do shading without having to buy two different kinds of glass. Um, However, the issue that I've run into sometimes is that if I need one particular color, like white, I use a lot of white. 
Um, also, it comes with almost no black. So if I need something that's black, I generally have to use a different type of tile that comes as like a standard black. Um, also, that can apply for the white. Um, I ran out of white before and had to order a new bag of mixed colors just because I had no white. One of the issues you can run into when building with glass like this is the different thicknesses that it can come in. A lot of times the type of glass that you would just put on your wall, for example, is going to be actually a little bit thicker than the glass I'm using here. So mixing them together can actually be a little bit of a can create different levels within the mosaic rather than it being a nice flat surface. In this mosaic I used all the same thickness of tile, but as I mentioned anything where I use black, the black that I've been getting is actually a bit thicker and has uh, grooved edges on the back. Um, so, uh, in some of the mosaics that you may have seen me make, there's actually going to be like a slight height difference between the two different layers. There may be a, a way around this that I can potentially come up with. I'm still adding new techniques every time I build a mosaic. I'm expanding my knowledge base. Looks like I took a little break. I'm probably watching some YouTube video while I'm building this as well, so it's not going to be the fastest. I'm seeing on the left side of the mushroom cap I could have done a bit better there on the background to help create a smoothness of that round edge. Now you could see when I pulled that up I actually held some of the tiles down to prevent them from coming with the square. I've created the last edge there using the square and then ah, I'm actually fixing the part that I just had talked about. A nice little shot of my hair as I <laughs> get in there with some pieces. Yeah, I've added I've added a couple of pieces. It looks like I don't have that footage though. And it looks like I tried to do just a little bit of shading in the sky as well. So, start at the horizon with a nice light blue, work my way up into a darker blue. And then I also included even darker blues in the upper right hand corner. Nice dark, deep blue. Um, as you can see, some of the blues have purple hues to them. Um, that's kind of the nature of the tiles that I use. And as I'm starting to do slightly more um, intentional shaping of the tiles. It does slow down just a little bit. It's still a random break for the most part, but because I want them filled in, I do have to shape some of the pieces as I would like them. Um, one thing about breaking glass, 
I mean, it applies with stone as well, although it depends on the type of stone, but glass is worse than stone, is that even when you are trying to intentionally shape something, sometimes the, sh the glass just kind of crumbles. Sometimes it breaks on a uneven line or it breaks not where you intend it to. Um, if I were able to buy a ring saw, I could actually do more intentionally shaped pieces. However, ring saws are expensive and it would, it would drastically make the amount of time it takes me to build a mosaic go up the ring saw is not as efficient. So there you go. There's the mosaic on its netting. You can see here I'm, I would go ahead and trim the excess netting. And then what my plan is to router out um, a place for the mosaics to sit in, actually embedded into that wood. So I line it up as best I can, and then I actually doing some measurements here to mark it actually where I want it to go using my square here. So you can see I have the router there. Um, the, the, the image of the, or the video of the routering actually was ruined. So I have embedded the mosaic and Here's the final product. Um, so the that mosaic is actually inside, like sunken into the wood, and then um, I, I'll put a, uh, a hanger on the back so it can be used as a wall hanging. If you liked this video, please like, comment, and, uh, and subscribe. If you would like to purchase this mosaic or any of my other mosaics, there should be a link uh, appearing on the screen now. Thank you, and remember, keep wandering, my friends.